Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Raquel from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at filmmakeru.com or, of course, follow us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore U. Every week, we interview a film professional to discuss their work. And this week, I'm joined by camera operator and cinematographer Mario Panagiotopoulos, whose work includes Bake Squad, Dr. 90210, Ritual, and Hard Promises, just to name a few. Welcome to the show, Mario. Hi, thank you. I have a question for you. Sure. And it's been bugging me for a long time. How do you define the difference between DP and cinematographer? Like, why is there a difference in there? Um, man, I don't know. I think uh, some, you know, a lot of people will consider it um, part of format. Like cinematographer is, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, narrative world and feature films and, you know, uh, an auteur, I guess, and uh, DP could be seen more as like the head of a department. Of th- that's how I see it. I, I mean, yeah. I don't really personally. I don't differentiate between the two. Um, mm-hmm. Cinematographer sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose it implies cinema as opposed yeah. to you know television. But um, yeah, that's my big thought on it. I, I don't put too much into it. Okay. Well, I do have to ask about bake squad because it is my five-year-old daughter's favorite show oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um as because you're you're a camera operator in that so what are some of the challenges operating the camera in that in that show um let's see with bake squad um uh, that was about a year ago they just did a, a second season I, I was not a part of i was uh, not in la at the moment um Some of the challenges of that show, let's see. Well, uh, it's real-time baking. So (laughs) there's, uh, you know, there's, you know, you always want to capture moments and you don't, you want to be on your toes to make sure, you know, if something happens or if something burns in the oven or something, you know, something like that, that you're not um, sort of, you know, uh, shut off to what's going on. But at the same time, you know, there are times in it where it's like, okay, this, product you know this cake went in or whatever and it's going to be an hour and so Mm -hmm. all you can do is kind of watch the uh contestant and just work off of their you know reactions and if they're kind of you know just waiting and bored it's it's you know there's not a lot to do and you scan the room for you know someone else but that has that setup specifically is an interesting stage because it has like four you know four stations and we're all in the middle kind of shooting out so it, it is cool to be able to um, just kind of clock what else is going on uh, in the moment. I, I, I wouldn't say it was particularly a challenging show. It's a very entertaining show. It's fun, you know, mm-hmm. to watch, but it's also fun to work on and, um, you know, uh, very kind of casual with the cast and everything. Um, yeah. Do you guys get to try the question. food once they've shot everything? Oh, um, like once they're like, you know what, we're done for the day, and then they yeah. got all this extra food. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, it depends on the show sometimes. A lot of food shows, that's a no no. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, I'm trying to think if I did on that, I, I don't think I did, but sometimes if, if it's the very end and you know, uh, sorry, um, what are they called? Uh, the, you know, the producers that are helping. Uh, the culinary department, if they're wrapping things up and we're for sure done, you know, <laughs> someone might snag a cupcake or one of the chefs might offer something up and you'll have it. But I, I don't think I tried anything that, that season. Because I've always wondered what some of those objects taste like. So I was hoping. I oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't. Because can't I mean, we, they tell us they're like, oh, yeah, it's great. But they do. Know. I will say they did go out of their way to. You know, not just, I know a lot of those, I I haven't done a ton of baking shows, but I know a lot rely heavily on, you know, fondant or whatever, you know, kind of elements to to Mm -hmm. make it uh, beautiful. But um, I remember the chefs being very particular in, you know, making sure it was a good chocolate or, you know, whatever uh, element to it wasn't uh, just aesthetic that it was, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, good taste. And they have the, the person um the cast that's there that week to you know uh pitch their 
event or whatever, you know, they want them to like it. And so, yeah. So now you've also worked on, you know, documentary style uh, shows, reality shows. So right. in terms of like documentary, I think about, especially if you're doing a very cinema verite style, like how do you figure out, uh, like you're, you're usually focusing on one person or one group or mm-hmm. one moment, but then as sort of what you were saying before with Bake Squad, something might happen off on the other side. So how do you determine where your focus should be if there's lots of stuff happening? Oh man. Um, that's an interesting question. I think if, you know, I've done a couple featured documentaries that are, that were heavily um, based on one subject, one person Mm -hmm. that is, um, so that those, uh, don't, you don't have to tend to go through that process, but you know, whether it's a producer in your ear, I mean, really as a camera person, you have to lock in and, you know, without deviating from what the director or producers want, you know, you're just always shooting with your second eye open and anticipating and, you know, trying to tell a story. Because a lot of times, you know, when you do this, I've been doing this for, you know, 16 years or something. And, um, you know, it can get, if you're just holding a, a close up or something and, you know, you can get kind of complacent but Mm -hmm. you know that's that's what keeps you going that's what keeps you motivated is oh how can i connect this to whether an element's happening in the background or what do i do in this frame to to tell a story whether you're you know it's necessary in that moment or not it is necessary for you as an artist to you know um just continuing to think and process in the moment Mm -hmm. now as a as a cinematographer what attracts you to your projects who um that's changed over the years um i think now uh i really i I do love doing documentaries um and you know subject matter is huge um you know you can't really fake passion you know what i mean so if you're on something whether it's a subject you're not necessarily into or you know you don't believe in what the story is that's trying to be told um you know you just you're just more engaged and it 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 forces it doesn't force you you just want to be more creative you want you know to um search for those moments and so uh that and an ability um to to have some freedom you know i think that's goes without saying i know it's kind of a cliche artist thing to say is is you know to to go after things that you're free to you know, explore mm-hmm. how you want to, how you want to tell the story, how you want to capture it. And, um, you know, but that's, it's usually a balance, you know, if, if you do whatever you want, you know, sometimes you need those, those boundaries to, to, um, keep you focused. So how do you like to get on the same page as your director when you're working as a cinematographer, especially on something like a documentary? Well, I mean, the last big one I did was for, um, World of Wonder, who also produces RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was Maplethorpe, which is a documentary about the photographer, Robert Maplethorpe. And um, frankly, the subject matter, you know, the goal was to, you know, uh, there was no reenactment or anything, but to to capture the essence of this, you know, 80s New York and, you know, um, place the the subjects that we interviewed in spaces that made sense to just, you know, honor the 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 subject and the time and i think if you have a common goal and a common story to tell that that's not too difficult Hmm. interesting so is there uh what would you say in your you know career is there's a a scene that was particularly difficult for you to to get but that you're really pleased with Hmm. let me think um well, I wish I could, I don't want to take too much time. And so I, I wish I could give you a specific thing and I will, if it comes to mind, but you know, there are a lot of times in general, especially with reality, going back to more of the reality stuff where, mm-hmm. you know, a person is very vulnerable and, you know, whether they're crying or breaking down or having a very personal moment that is, you know, almost questionable uh, whether you should be stopping down and, and helping or just staying uh staying in the moment and you know knowing that everyone signed on to tell this thing and so you know in very vague terms i would say those moments i'm I'm not comfortable doing that when it's not 
you know, when it's a real person dealing with real emotions, but um, unless they're, you know, completely like turn off the cameras, this and that, then, you know, we keep going and keep engaging. So um, yeah, nothing, nothing comes to <laughs> mind right now. <laughs> so I, I've, I've, I will say I've filmed probably hundreds of people breaking down and crying at some moment. Um, so how do you, <laughs> cause like that could be, I, I want to say like, how do you not just turn off then? Like, how do you still stay engaged? Uh, turn off in terms of what? In, in terms of emotions, like you were saying. Like... Uh, sometimes you have to, well, I don't know. I mean, you can, I can kind of, you know, uh, I can kind of do both at once, you know, mm -hmm. um, shooting is very much second nature to me now, you know, after all these years, it's kind of, um, uh, you know, my instincts are there. And so I can have empathy for a person and really, you know, and a lot of time, if it's a multi-camera show, we're kind of like in our viewfinder and then looking at each other and being like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> like this is, you know, awkward or, Hey, do you want to back up? You know, sometimes we'll back off a little bit just to give them, you know, physical room, uh, to breathe emotionally and physically. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think those moments can be riveting and they usually are later on in the moment. It's, it can be tough, but, um, yeah, I think it usually, usually pays off. I, I don't feel good about it when it's, when you feel like you're exploiting someone that doesn't want to be there, that, yeah, that doesn't make me feel good, but <laughs> <laughs> otherwise. So now you've worked on a lot of reality shows and I got to ask, is there one where you were like, oh, this, this doesn't sound like it's going to work because they always have the craziest premises. And then you're like, ah, oh, this totally works. <laughs> I, I, that is, I'm usually wrong. I will tell you that. Yeah. Uh, there is a, there, you know, there are some either pilots or, you know, one season shows where I'm like, this is going to be awesome. And then it gets canceled after two episodes or it never goes past the pilot. And there are other things that, um, you know, I mean, I guess for instance, this goes way back, but the the example that comes to mind is um, Flavor of Love, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, I mean, we were verbally, me and some of the other crew, we were like, who in the world is going to watch this? Like, this is absurd and ridiculous and, you know, it's kind of no taste here. Or whatever. And it ended up being like the highest rated show in VH1 history at the time. <laughs> so I was like, I guess I was wrong. Yeah. Um, um, and in, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, not to bring it back around to drag race and not that I didn't think it would succeed, but in the, you know, I, I was there season one and, you know, it was more about, I thought it was awesome what they were doing. I was just questioning whether America was ready for it or if, you know, how it would be received or how you know would, mm -hmm. would it be you know would people be against it? It, it just all these thoughts kind of politically um and you know it turned out to be the juggernaut that it is and you yeah. know like i said not that i doubted it uh just more questioning you know uh, america's response yeah. to it you know yeah well and it's interesting too because it wasn't just america but like the rest yeah, of yeah. now there's you know yeah, Paul Jerry, the world. australia germany and like it's it's one of the craziest rides I've been on in, in terms of like inception to what's going on now is yeah. mind blowing. It's amazing. Now, when I talk to editors, a lot of times we talk about pilots and how hard they are to craft because you're trying to mm -hmm. figure out the story. Is it the same thing for like cinematographers? Oh, and, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you, the, you know, my instinct at least as, as a cinematographer is to not, uh just not be repetitive you know and and from a producing standpoint i'm speaking very broad terms here but yeah. you know a lot of times a pilot will not have a lot of money or will they're not sure how they want to want it to be formatted and so uh there there has to be a um trap of like falling into um you know old formats or just you know these kind of cliche tropes of uh, how how you capture things and you always want to kind of bring a, fami a familiarity to it so everyone's mm -hmm. comfortable but not just make the same show that's been made a million times because that frankly has been done a lot obviously with different genres so um but yeah you try to bring something new you try to 
you know, at the same time, sort of satisfy the client, if you will, and, you know, give them the, the show that they want or that they think they want, or that, you know, sometimes you can have an Im impression on them where even as a camera person, you, you can motivate the format a little bit story-wise and go, hey, you know, if we think about it from this angle instead of the traditional, this, you know, uh, narrative, um, and they, usually they appreciate that, so. Um, oh. Now, is there a particular show that, like, what would you say is the show that you had most fun on? Ooh, um, show I had the most fun on. Well, uh, wow. Um, I mean, Drag Race is incredibly entertaining. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I think if, um, if I had to, well, and again, Maple Thorpe, that documentary, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was fun, but, you know, it was meeting a lot of, you know, these iconic people and getting to sit in a room with Annie Leibovitz and Debbie Harry and, you know, all these huge, yeah. you know, that's, to me, I love that because I love just to listen to, yeah, I get to, I get to pick a frame, light it, you know, uh, and then after that, I get to listen to this conversation for two or three hours with, you know, uh, an, an iconic person and, and their mind, you know, um, I'm not, I am getting to an age of, you know, I used to, in my twenties, I would get on shows and I was like, yeah, sure. Put me on a boat in the Mediterranean or, you know, where you're like, now I'm like, uh, that was exciting for me 15 years ago was to travel the world and, uh, you know, go to these places and, that I wouldn't otherwise go to and see things. And I mean, that's all very exciting. As I get older I'm, and I have kids, you know, like I like to travel, but um, that is not, that used to be the fun element for me. It's not anymore. Now I'm uh, kind of honed in on subject matter and just kind of being entertained by, by what we're shooting. Yeah. You know? So, now you said you sat with Leibowitz. So did you pick up anything as a camera operator slash cinematographer? Oh, did I say Leibowitz? I meant Fran Leibowitz. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I meant Fran. Okay. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess, I guess my last question for you, what would you say is your favorite guilty pleasure film or TV show to watch? It, you got to that moment um man uh guilty pleasure um i honestly i don't i'm pretty selective about the tv that i watch and so i i wouldn't say that i have a guilty pleasure if i have to turn something on that's just in the background it's uh and i know this is you know is pretty common but it's probably cooking oh yeah the cooking show <laughs> um as far as like a guilty pleasure because i don't think anything else i watch i'm you know necessarily about so <clears throat> well thank you so much for yeah. letting me interview you today yeah of course thank you for having me thanks and that's it for this week everyone make sure to check us out at filmmakeru.com i'm your host gordon burkell thanks for watching Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs.